I'm Tom Johnson, Thomas Johnson Antique Furniture Restoration in Gorham, Maine. This is a very nice table. It's from the uh, postmodern studio furniture movement of the 1980s, uh, built by a uh, very well known artist, Wendy Mariama. Uh, she's an artist, furniture maker, and educator out of California. And uh, it's a very interesting table. It's got a lot of different elements. It, it does open up as a cabinet, it's a functional piece. You know, as you can see, different elements, different shapes, different treatments to the wood. Gold leaf, red leaf, fluorescent paint, but it's been damaged. Right down here you see, it's been damaged by an animal. And uh, you can guess what kind of animal damaged it. I'll give you a hint, it's not a dog or a cat. So that's what needs to be repaired. So what I want to do here is I want to get this up like this. I want to get the broken area into a, a horizontal position. And so I, I made a stand here off camera padded, see if that will work for me. This seems really secure. Now, I want to see if I can uh, jig this up so that I can use a router to give me a good surface. So I have a piece of plywood here with a hole cut out in the center, and uh, I've cut some 2x4s, and the plan is to uh, secure these to the bench over the repair area here, and this will provide a platform for the router to uh, run on. This leg has movement, so I've got to clamp this a little more securely. I realize now I'm going to do this in two stages. I've been cutting the lower part of the leg here, uh, and it's you know it's nice and level, even though you need to go a little deeper there. But uh, the upper part of the break, I can go a lot shallower. So I'm going to do this in two or maybe even three stages. I finished up the first cut, and now I got to switch to a, a shorter router bit. I'm going to step this up uh, even a third time. It will really minimize the amount of material I'm taking away. So I've been wondering this whole time what kind of wood this was. So I contacted uh, Wendy Mariama and she said it was gelatin, which is something I had not heard of. It's a wood from Southeast Asia, uh, very fine, fine-grained wood like basswood used a lot for carving, and she was kind enough to send me three pieces. So what I'm going to do is glue one layer at a time. I'll glue the first piece 
and then reroute it uh, to make sure I'm good and level with the second level and then the next piece and so on, the next piece. Okay, this is dried for about eight hours, and now I'm going to route this new piece down level with the next step. So I want to get this router bit set just slightly lower than my second step there. Okay. Now I can glue down the next piece. Okay, now we uh, do it again. Okay, I can remove my whole uh, router setup now. I won't be using it anymore. Okay, now I got to shape this leg. Um, well, I'm going to start with, you know, cutting this flush with the foot here, and and then locating the foot itself. Now this. Uh, leg was originally bandsaw and I can't do that. But you know I've got a, a surface here, a, a facet of this leg I can follow down and the same on this side there's a facet here and I've, I'm just going to have to try to saw at that same angle uh, down to you know where this area in here it's so hard to say. Well let's try it. Now I've got to make sure I don't cut into my foot here. Foot's probably like this. So I just want to keep away from there. There's a lot of guesswork here. I'm going to err towards leaving too much wood there. So I'm looking at this facet. I'm just going to try to keep the saw at the same angle. Okay, this is good. I was a little too cautious, which is good. Now I can see more clearly how I've got to follow this facet down to about this point here.
Okay, so far so good. But don't worry, I still got plenty of chances to screw up. Okay, I've cut this side now, and I think you can see that this facet right here goes all the way down to the bottom of the foot. So if I can follow this one here straight down to there, that'll be good. draw a line, which will help. Now it's still heavy here, uh, which is good. Uh, maybe I can cut up and maintain this uh, angle right here. Okay, so now I'll follow the next facet down. I'm a little bit unsure what's going to happen here, but uh, I'll follow this down and see what happens. So far so good, I think. So now I think I'll follow this facet down. the leg now. Alright, I think I'm going to try to define this foot a little bit more at this point. Maybe I'll go with this facet now. Still got this little facet here. I think I'm going to switch to uh, a hand plane now, see if I can bring these in. I can see I've got a high point here.
Now I've still got some damage here. I'm going to fill that those in with a water-based putty so I can wipe it off and not sand. So this texture was made with a, uh, in other words, this leg was shaped with a grinder with uh, heavy-duty sandpaper on it. Now I'm not going to attempt to use a grinder on this. I'll just use a regular disc sander and see if I can just recreate that a little bit. Okay, now I'm going to sand with uh, 220. Uh, you know, even though it has tooling marks, it's uh, it's still pretty smooth. I think the only way I can uh, really see what I've got here is to go ahead and put some paint on it. Uh, you know, start trying to mix these colors anyway, and uh, I think then I'll really be able to see what my marks are like. Looks good. Well, it's hard to believe that uh, paint right out of the bottle would would look so good. I think I just need to keep applying, let this dry, and then apply more of it. Okay, I've let this dry for an hour. I'm going to give it uh, another coat here. Try to touch up some of these little spots. I'm at the point now where I, I don't think I can get it any better. This may be it. I think the next step would be to uh, stand this up and have a look at it. Yeah, it's not bad. Um, I think I need to improve this area, at least attempt to improve this area here. I've got a little cut out there that I missed. That's what's good about putting it, you know, back into position. I'm looking at it the correct way now. I think I could fool with this uh, endlessly and never really make it substantially better than it is now. Okay, I've got a uh, few touch-ups to do here and there, just uh, wear marks on some of these corners. Now let that dry and then uh, buff it a little bit.
So when I came in this morning and looked at my repair area there, it looked great. And then of course, when I start looking at it closely, I can see the areas where I was having troubles blending it in. The reality is if you keep looking at this this close, you're never going to be satisfied with it. At a certain point, it's important to set it on the floor, stand back, and see what it looks like. So there you have it, a really nice, I guess a hall table of postmodern studio furniture. What a great example. It's uh, from 1990 by Wendy Mariama. And uh, obviously the, the leg had been damaged. And uh, sure enough, uh, on the floor here, standing here looking, standing back looking at it, it looks fine. I'm going to have to resist the temptation to quit, to, to keep fooling with it while it's here in the shop. I'll be sweating bullets till my brother Greg sees this video. He's the only one that's really authorized to work on postmodern furniture. And uh, I hope he agrees. I think it looks pretty good. I hope you liked the video, and if you did, please subscribe and like, and be sure to hit the bell icon so that you'll be notified when I put out a new video.